A lot of PCT folks here. Woohoo! Uh, so PCT is in uh, Williamsport, Pennsylvania, uh, known for Little League World Series. Yes, absolutely. And also being kind of in the middle of nowhere. Um, so I grew up in rural New York and I'm familiar with the challenges of education in rural areas. Um, and I worked at my family's business for a long time as a lumber company as a kid. Uh, I worked in a lumber company and survived. And I remember thinking like, I'm not gonna do this the rest of my life. But um, there weren't a lot of opportunities for me to do non, you know, uh, uh, trade manual labor kind of things in the area. And I just escaped and went to Alaska because <laughs> that was less rural. Um, <laughs> But I will say, um, you know, PCT, um, only in the last four or five years you've been become a four-year institution, something like that? Uh, uh, 89. No, no, 89. 89. So it's been a while. Sorry, I, my, my story just fell apart. But um, they do a fantastic job of, in central Pennsylvania, putting together a program to help people, highly motivated students, learn and excel in, in cybersecurity. Like, um, I, I, they invite me up once a year to come and talk and, and talk about the industry and they help shape their curriculum and that kind of thing. Um, but I'm always impressed with both the faculty and the students at PCT, the work that you all do when you're up there, um, and the difference that you make in the community up there is immense. So a lot of respect for the work that goes on at PCT, the students, the faculty. So we're happy to have you guys talking about the work that you're doing with outreach with high school students and that kind of thing. So thanks for coming to ShmooCon. Thank you. Thank you. So if you can't tell, we've seated the audience. Uh, we have a whole bunch of our students and graduates here in the first couple rows. Uh, and if you're looking for some, we think, awesome security professionals, they would be the people you would want to hire. So if you get a chance to talk to them and hire them, please do. Uh, just as a note, they won't tell you this, but I get 10% of their first year salary, so make sure that's in their contract. Okay, um, all of us have had the experience of trying to, uh, I'm gonna say, teach people about security. And one of the problems we continue to run into across the entire industry is we have a whole lot of work that needs to be done and not enough people to get it done. And one of the things we often see at Penn College is that we don't see enough kids coming into us interested in security to begin with or that even know about security. Uh, we get a lot of students who come into our IT program and after their first year they'll wander into somebody's office and say, hey, what's this security thing all about? So uh, a few years ago we wrote a proposal for the NSF and said we would like to start a program where we talk to high school kids Number one, raise awareness about what security is, and number two, give them some information about what it is and hopefully encourage them to go into this kind of a, a program. So to give you a little bit of background, um, Bruce already told you a little bit about the college. Pennsylvania College of Technology is an affiliate of Penn State University. The easiest way to describe and understand our relationship with Penn State is that we're kind of a wholly owned subsidiary of Penn State. Uh, we have our own board of directors, we maintain our own curriculum, we maintain our own programs, uh, and by and large, Penn State sees that the money that the state makes available to us, which keeps growing smaller every year, uh, <laughs> gets to us. Um, we are in, within the Penn State system, we are actually the second largest campus, we are second only to main campus itself. Uh, at Penn College, we have a variety of professional degrees, a variety of technical degrees, and starting just last year, we began offering our first master's degree program. So the college has evolved fairly rapidly since 1989 when it became a four-year college. Our program in particular, we offer a Bachelor of Science in Information Assurance and Cybersecurity. Um, it is very heavy on the information assurance part, it is a little light on the cybersecurity part uh, because mostly what we are trying to target our students for is jobs where they get to do a lot of analysis and planning and things like that, kind of the high value jobs in the industry. We are not necessarily focused on creating the cyber warriors. Not that that's not a good job, it's just not a, a very good job for us to focus on. Uh, we do some of the cybersecurity. The kids like to do hacking and stuff like that. 
Uh, but we like to focus a little bit more, get them to think a little bit more about what are the preventative measures that you do in order to keep a company secure rather than figuring out how to destroy somebody else. Um, <clears throat> so the grant. Uh, when we took, as I said before, when we took a look at our program, what we found is that a lot of the kids coming into us really knew nothing about security, and especially in the area that we are. Williamsport tends to be a fairly rural area, north central Pennsylvania. Uh, the industries up there are, let's see, farming. There's people that go out and they cut down trees and cut them up for lumber. And that's about it. Uh, it. It doesn't go a whole lot further than that. And I mean, I'm not criticizing that. Those are excellent things to do in north central Pennsylvania. There's a lot of good land up there. But for students who want to pursue some sort of a technical degree, they aren't going to get a whole lot of exposure until they get to college. And so as a result, they really don't know until they get to college what's out there. Uh, you go to, say, an elementary school around Williamsport and ask a bunch of first graders, what do you want to be when they grow up? Farmer, lumberjack, fireman, doctor, nurse. That's going to be about it. Typical things you always hear, right? Nobody is going to say, I want to be an information security professional. Why not? Because they have no idea that's a job. All right? And in fact, in talking to a lot of other people at conferences and so forth, I'm going to say that there's a whole lot of schools out there. If you ask the first graders what they want to be when they grow up, none of them are going to say, I want to be an information security professional. So we looked at this and said, this is a problem. We, we really need to fix this problem. And I've actually read a lot of articles in the last, I'm going to say, five or six years where people keep saying, we've got to do something about K through 12. We've got to do something about K through 12. But when you look around and see what is there, a lot of what there is is make sure that you don't talk about mommy and daddy's job. Make sure that you don't tell people on Facebook that you're going on vacation this week. Not that that's bad advice, but you're not giving these kids any idea that there's an honest to God job out there and that they could actually be doing it. So what we basically did was we got together with some of the other folks we worked with and we said, let's build a grant and let's try to do something about this that's a little more meaningful. Um, Mrs. Alicia McNett is one of our faculty colleagues who worked with us on this grant. She helped us develop uh, a lot of the content. She's helped us deploy the class. Uh, Dr. Bradley Webb is actually here with us uh, at the conference. Uh, he has done a lot of the oversight of the grant, done a lot of the management, and thank God has done a lot of the administrative crap, like call people and say, hey, your kid missed the bus tonight, who's going to come pick him up? And then we don't have to do that. Yay. Um, also, as part of the grant, we decided it'd be a really good idea since we're not as young as we used to be and don't relate to high school age children as well as we used to. I shouldn't call them children, but that's the kind of way I think of my kids. Um, we said, you know what, maybe we should involve some students who sort of think like the high school kids do, who sort of still relate to them. And so we actually got um, almost uh, a dozen students who worked with us in various capacities in terms of reaching out to the kids, interacting with the kids while we were in the classroom, running our labs, making sure things work correctly. On top of this, I was reminded today, and I feel very bad for having forgotten, and since some of them are here, I need to give credit where credit is due. The year before the grant started, we actually also had a class of students that as part of their senior research project work, we asked them to take a look at what should we teach in a class like this, and that we had a pretty good idea of, but how should we present it to high school kids, or how should we present it to pre-college kids in a way they could relate to. So they were able to give us a lot of insight as to how to put all this together and how to build content that the high school kids would take an interest in and not just tune out because they're sick and tired of yet one more do's and don'ts list. Okay. So what were we trying to accomplish? Well, I think I said before, we want them to be aware that there is a career. We would love to generate an interest in them in wanting to pursue that career. But failing that, the one other thing we wanted to accomplish is whatever career they go into, even if they're out in the woods cutting down trees, 
We want them to be mindful of the fact that when it comes to their corporate IT systems, they are a partner in security. It isn't the IT guy's job. It isn't the security guy's job alone. The employees have to play along too or this all fails. And what we've been able to do with this program so far is the kids who have come in who were interested in IT at least a little bit, a lot of them bid on the first two very quickly. Hey, this looks like a great gig. I think I want to study this. And right now, this year, we are actually dealing with a lot of students who had no interest in IT or security to begin with, and they actually fall in the third category uh, where they're saying, well, I want to know what security is all about so that when I do my job, I can do my part. And that's pretty cool stuff. What do we teach them? Well, this is what we teach in our introductory security class. And we said if that's what we teach to our majors, that's what we ought to teach these kids too. That's a pretty intimidating list of topics. Some of you in here, I'm sure, are looking at that saying, how in the hell do you teach a bunch of 9th and 10th and 11th graders risk management? How do you teach them policy? How do you teach them contingency planning? How do you teach them cryptography? Hell, they don't know enough math to do anything in cryptography. Glad you asked. <laughs> OK, so you're right. We can't sit down and go through the math of RSA with these kids. They're not there yet. We can't sit down and make them understand or help them understand how AES works. They're not there yet. But one of the things we can help them understand is that when you need to protect confidentiality of data, whether it's data being stored or whether it's data in transit, one of the best tools you have is encryption. And then we give them some labs where they can actually see how encryption tools work. One of the things we do that is actually very powerful, we have them create a file, open up the file in a binary editor and see, I can read all the plain text off the file. Pretty much no matter what kind of file it is, even if it's a Microsoft Word file. There's a bunch of goobity gook at the beginning, but eventually I can find the plain text content. Now I encrypt the file and I open it again with the binary editor. I have no idea what I'm looking at. And that means anybody who wants to try to steal this data also has no idea what they're looking at. So yeah, can they write a cryptographic algorithm? No. Do they know how to use cryptography as a tool at this, as a tool at this point? Yeah, pretty good bet they do. And this is actually the results we've seen and the feedback that we've gotten from the students. Uh, we can't make them experts in every one of those topics, but we can give them an appreciation for how those topics lead to the jobs and the tools that people need to use to manage the data. One of the things that we also kind of focused on whenever we wrote the grant was that often it is the case that people are taught security is a list of do this, don't do this. And when they say why, people say, just do this and don't do this. I can't explain why. We said, you know what, that isn't going to help at all. Because as soon as the situation changes, like in five minutes, <laughs> do this and don't do this doesn't work anymore. So the way we structure the different modules that we present to the students is we make sure that they understand all of these different categories. And in particular, the things that we focus on the most is, what is the risk of not protecting this data? If you don't do the job, what's going to go wrong? What controls do you have available to you? Because that's kind of the, OK, now I understand what tools I have. And in particular, who's responsible for what? Who should care? 99% of the time, it's the data user or the data owner. Who's actually going to implement this? A lot of the times it's either the IT administrator or it may be the security professional. What's going to be protected? When is it going to be protected? Where is it going to be protected? How is it going to be protected? And so forth. We get the kids to think about all of these things. And pretty soon they realize that, you know what? If you take me as the user, the owner, or the individual, the employee, out of the picture, this all falls apart. So they learn very quickly that they are part of the protection of the data, even though there's a security professional somewhere who is allegedly supposed to be protecting this. And that helps drive the point home that, number one, as employees, we're important in the process. And number two, there's a whole job out there that I could do that would be really cool, and maybe I'd like to do it. Um, 
think I already said that. So what have we done to date? Well, we're on our second cohort. In our first cohort, we had 17 students. Uh, by the end of the program, five out of the 17 students had said, I really want to do security as a professional. It's important to note that all of those students came in, I think all but one actually, came in saying, I'm already predisposed to do something in IT. I want to do something computer related. But by the end, five of those 17 said, I actually want to do information security or cyber security. Uh, so we considered that a success. Uh, unfortunately, you'll see as you look at the, the cohort sizes, the numbers aren't big enough to do a statistical analysis to see if five out of 17 is significant. We just said five sounds good to us. Uh, this year we have 23 students. Uh, about half of those students are IT prone. Uh, at least one of them has indicated they are now interested in security. The other half are interested in all kinds of other things, culinary arts, nursing, medicine, uh, one student is really excited. She's interested in robotics engineering. Uh, and one of the reasons she took the class is she said, I keep reading articles where people are building robots, they're designing automation, they're getting hacked, and it just scares me that people aren't doing what they need to do to design these things right. I said, I think then you're in the right place. <laughs> uh, so it, it's, we, it, we appear to be having an effect. What are we planning for the future? What would we like to do for the future? Well, one of the things I would like to be able to do for the future is begin pushing this backwards. Uh, we've managed to talk to kind of the upper end of K through 12. Uh, we have already done a few programs from time to time with middle schoolers. Uh, we've seen a lot of, I wouldn't say data, but a lot of speculation uh, that if you don't really get kids by about fifth or sixth grade, and make them aware of a career, then the likelihood of them choosing that career is very low after that. So if you wait until they're juniors or seniors in high school to tell them about information security professionals, you're really too late. You're about five or six years too late. So we would like to keep pushing this backwards. We're in the process. Uh, Dr. Webb is working with us, and, and uh, we're working with the college to begin putting together another grant proposal to say, okay, now that we got this, let's see what we can do for junior high, let's see what we can do for middle school. Um, ultimately, uh, the holy grail of all this is when you walk into a first grade class and say, what do you want to be when you grow up? Somebody says, I want to be a cybersecurity professional. <laughs> so when that happens, I will be thrilled. I will consider my life's work to be worthwhile. Uh, I'm going to let Dr. Gorka talk to you for a couple minutes about what resources there are, because one of the things we want to be able to do with this grant is we would like to be able to push it out to anybody who would like to start building a program like this. Um, sorry, not the grant, but the materials that we've developed. The uh, last two years, we off actually offered the class on campus with the high school students from two or four schools local high schools coming onto campus and spending the entire year with us one uh, day a week to offer the class taught by us. And in the future, what we're looking at doing is using our dual enrollment program, it's called PC Now, to offer it to any of the schools within Pennsylvania, and I think there might be some slightly outside of Pennsylvania, right near the border, that actually participate in that program. So we're looking at being able to offer this throughout, basically throughout Pennsylvania to high schools that are interested. And in that situation, they'll be taking the class at their particular high school. But even further beyond that, as part of the grant, we want to make the materials that we've put together available for anyone who wants to use them. Uh, and to that end, we've put together the materials within a Google Drive, uh, we periodically update it. We're in the process of still offering it, and we go through our materials to update them based on comments the students made last year. Um, so if you are interested in receiving these materials, what we'd like you to do is email uh, to cyber.pct at gmail.com, and what we're going to have you do is fill out a short survey that basically says, What's your, why are you interested in this? And we, it's just to kind of keep track of the kind of interest we're receiving from people who, who want to take a look at our materials. Um, and after the survey, we'll give you access to the drive. And right now, it's just kind of, Mouse, where are you? Okay. Uh, 
right now we just have um, some basic stuff out there. Uh, Dr. Miller showed you the list of topics. They're arranged in modules, and each module has uh, a folder for it. And there's a uh, presentation that we have, some activities that we do with the students, um, and some other materials that uh, we found helpful to share with the, with the students. And uh, from there, do you have any questions? Shift of, Shift of five? I don't know the shortcuts. And, and if, if you forget um, the cyber.pct at gmail.com address, if you send it to myself or Dr. Miller, which you can find our names by, you know, looking at Penn College and searching for it, that'll be great too. Question? Now we're in 45 minutes. <laughs> so the, it's based around a four credit class currently. Uh, so we meet with them two hours a week for the entire year, which is the equivalent of four hours a week for one semester. One, one question. Um, you talked about your dual enrollment program. Um, how do you raise awareness with like school administrators and school boards and guidance counselors and things? That seems to be a, you know, a critical part. Of it. Okay, so one of the things I'm going to do at this point is throw, throw my assistant dean under the bus because he's the best person to ask that and he's right over here and he'll be thrilled to talk to you about it. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thanks.